happening, my friends? It's Griff Nilsson, your holistic lifestyle hacker. And how are you today? How is life? How are you doing? We are going to be going back through story time. This is uh, the end of overeating. This is continuing. This is part five of our installation. And today, what I want to talk about real quickly, we introduced it last time, is this concept of hyper palatability. Okay? And just to give you a quick update on what that is, make something very complicated, very simple, is foods that come from Mother Nature, whether it be uh, a protein source, a fat source, fruit, vegetable, whatever, they are designed to give us a certain amount of pleasure. Okay, So we eat the food, our brain registers that, it gives us a certain amount of dopamine, which gives us a certain amount of endorphins, which gives us a certain amount of feel good, right? Great, I feel excellent. Now, Mother Nature does that so that we will continue to have the foods. It is the self-preservation mechanism. It's what allows the species to perpetuate. Now, scroll forward. It's 2018, right? Almost 2019. And now we have hyperpalatable foods, foods that are literally scientifically designed to get us hooked to them. And when I say scientifically, I'm talking... I've said this before, but there's scientists that are paid high six figures to figure out just the right point. We're going to talk about that in the next video. It that gets us addicted to foods. Okay. And what I want to first talk about today is what makes a hyper palatable food. How do scientists bring sugars, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats together in a way that just lights us up. Because remember, a hyper palatable food, so hyper, meaning above, I already explained it last time, it, it gets us addicted to the food. It's, it's a point at which our body, when we take in a food, let's say for example, we have like a Coke and or, or a donut, that is designed to be hyper palatable. It's designed to give us so much dopamine, so much endorphins, that we're like, mmm, great. So then when we look at real foods or whole foods, we're like, oh, gross. I mean, think of, it, think of your kids, right? Why do kids hate their vegetables? Why do they have a hard time having whole foods? In 20 years of nutrition coaching, I find clients all the time that are like, Griff, the hardest thing for me to do is to cook for my kids because they hate what I give them, right? And I get that because what's happened is their pleasure centers have been hijacked with these hyper palatable foods, okay? So I want to explain this concept of hyperpalatability in a way that Dr. Kessler explains. And he said that the biggest combination, the most powerful foods is not just foods that are sweet, right? A lot of people have like sweet tooths and like, oh, I'll go for the sweet stuff. But what they found scientifically is that we get addicted to food when sugar is combined with fat. Now I'm talking processed sugar with processed fat. We bring this together. He mentioned a study back that was just done in the late 80s, and he said, Dr. Drinkowski found that what we like most is not sugar alone, but sugar in combination with fat. Fat, he wrote, is responsible for the characteristic texture, flavor, and aroma of which many foods are like, uh, uh, sorry, and aroma of many foods and largely determines the palatability of the diet. Okay. He goes on to say, Drinkowski conducted a study in which he added various amounts of sugar to five different dairy products. Now, think of, think of what you would buy in terms of like low fat and full fat. Skim milk, whole milk, half, and heavy cream, and heavy cream blended with safflower oil. Skim milk had almost no fat, while the cream and oil mixture contained more than 50% fat. Asked to choose which they liked best, people gave low marks to products with sweetened skim milk with lots of sugar and little fat and to unsweetened cream, lots of fat and little sugar. Mix the same amount of sugar into low fat and high fat products, however, and people invariably choose the higher fat mixtures. Fat and sugar levels both influence preference. So think about that. The average, how can we, let's just wrap this into a ball of applicability, shall we? How do we take this into our own life and apply this? Well. The thing, the thing that we have to understand is that if we're addicted to processed foods and we expect whole foods to give us that same amount of hyper pleasure, we're barking up the wrong tree. It's never going to be that way. We have to come to a mental conclusion that when we shift over to a whole food diet, 
we're not going to get this hyper palatability, this hyper response, this, this amazing little endorphin rush and this sugar high and low that these, these foods give us. Um, and we have to be okay with that. And what I found is that when we, I know this personally because I was a sugar addict for half my life, when I became more complacent with whole foods, my body started to adapt. It started to crave whole foods because whole foods is what gives us nutrition. And really what happens is it takes the body a while to reset the pleasure center in our brains because it's so used to having these high levels of dopamine that when it doesn't get that, and this is where we're going to talk about withdrawal later, but we get withdrawal symptoms. So we have to expect that when we're going from processed food or high sugar or you know, any kind of processed food into a more whole foods based diet, that there's going to be a transition. There's going to be the headaches. There's going to be the irritability. There's going to be the feeling of lack, like you're not satisfied, like it just didn't quite hit it. And that's normal. So our, our lesson of applicability here is just to be okay with what is. Know that it's going to take some time to restoke the brain, restoke the pleasure centers, and get us back to normal. So it all has to do with our psychology. We're going to keep going on this. Thank you so much for tuning in today. You guys are great. We'll see you in the next video.